Janet had seen him, but I saw him dressed, as it were, in a place suit. And he was singing and dancing and rejoicing over us as we were worshiping him. And he began to sing a song that echoed through the heavens and resounded on the earth. And he was singing, eternity, eternity. I have made thee for eternity. Eternity is forever. It shall never end. And then as he was singing and dancing and repeating eternity and that it would never end, he changed it and he began to sing. You are the reason for my rejoicing. And you are the reason for my returning. You are the reason for the movements and the beauties and the glories that I am releasing upon the earth. For the Lord saith unto thee, Thine eye has not seen and thine ear has not heard that which I have prepared and have in store for thee. But I say unto thee, thou dost think that thou dost rejoice, but I say unto thee, I rejoice more than thee over that which is purposely and beautiful and glorious. For I have prepared thee and thou hast prepared thyself 
For my coming, saith the Lord, and I say I come. And thou art the reason that I am coming. And the Lord saith, I would remind thee that thou dost sing at Christmas time, that I am the reason for the season. But he says, oh, you are the reason for the season, saith the Lord. You're the reason for my glory filling the earth. You're the reason for the glorious happenings that is about to happen. And I say unto thee, eternity is forever and ever. And thy honor is forever. And thy glory is forever. Yea, and our oneness is forever. And I say unto thee, look ye up, and be ye caught up into eternity. For the Lord saith unto thee, it is forever. And thou art the reason for my coming and for my rejoicing, saith the Lord. You are the reason, you are the reason, you are the reason for my quick return, saith the Lord. You're the reason, the reason, eternity, eternity, eternity.
east and the west. There's going to be a revival, a Holy Ghost revival. There's going to be a revival, a Holy Ghost revival. There's going to be a revival in the land. Hallelujah, there's a revival. Hallelujah, all over this land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to have revival in everything. How many knows that? In everything. In everything. Starting tomorrow morning, we will have church in the Richmond Church. For those that go there, we'll have it right here also. It begins at 945 Sunday School and 11 o'clock the worship service. 10 o'clock right here in the morning for you that are staying on the campground. We'll have a service here. We're on the radio there, and Sister Ruth goes in all day tomorrow again at 3 o'clock, then again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We're going to have revival. Hallelujah. We're going to stay in revival. We're going to eat, sleep, and live revival. Can you say amen? Let's give the Lord a welcome uh, as Sister Ruth comes to minister. Hallelujah. You may be seated. A hidden people. The world shall know A hidden people God's glory shall show just been so conscious <clears throat> this little hidden group of people up among the Amish that's only one of countless thousands of different people groups in America that God's going to visit <laughs> some of us are going to be so shocked because if we're not careful, they're going to run ahead of us. A couple of years ago, I was out at Park City, Utah. And in the morning service, there was a gentleman in the service that I later learned was a bishop in the Mormon church. He sat near the back and I was teaching, and it was happened to be my birthday that day, and so they invited a group of us for lunch. We were sort of overlooking the beautiful valley, <clears throat> and they invited the bishop. And I know the Mormons in Jerusalem. I know they love Israel, and so I just sat and talked to him about Israel. 
and I invited him back to the meeting. Oh, he said he couldn't possibly come back. He'd come that once, but he couldn't possibly come. But that night, I watched him walk in. And this time, he wasn't on the last seat. He was two or three rows from the front. And at some point in the praise and worship, I noticed as his hand went up. In fact, he was shocked when he saw his own hand. <laughs> and when he saw his own hand, there was a pole nearby. And he quickly reached out and got a hold of the pole. God's made all of us with a heart that hungers for God. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've got to stop looking at labels. Oh, yes. We've got to stop looking at labels. I was in a meeting last weekend, <clears throat> a morning meeting, and there was a very famous minister. He was the associate of a famous organization. If I were to mention it, everybody would know. But as I looked at him, I saw all of the picket fences had come down except one. Meaning that he had allowed himself not to be fenced in like we all tend to be. But he still had one, you know, we sort of keep the, the one picket fence for nostalgic reasons or <laughs> you know, we, we like the one. It sort of shows our credentials, where we've come from, where we've been. He was willing to let the one down on each side, but he still had one sort of beautiful picket fence that was still there. But you know, all the fences are going to come down. <laughs> They're all even the beautiful, ornate, picket ones that we sort of still keep as a as a little, you know, a little reservation for whatever is in the future. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. God is doing it so quickly. <laughs> so quickly. I, I, I don't know about you, but the last couple of weeks, especially week before last, as the news concerning our president was breaking on the television i i stayed up most nights all night long praying for him praying for our nation it looked at one moment as if within two or three days he could be forced to have resigned in the natural but we stood and believed god for a turnaround and the reason we believe for a turnaround is that i know that revival needs a certain space in order to happen. You can't have such trouble that you're only thinking of trouble. You can't have such distress that you're only thinking of distress. You can't have such economic problems that you're only thinking about it. There may be some shakings, but they're not total shakings. Amen. In the midst of it, we begin to see God work. And I said to the Lord, Lord, we want a space for revival. <laughs> oh, I was interceding for revival. We are interceding for revival. And one of the sisters gave a word, saw the heavens black with the clouds, so black that you couldn't even see the flag of America uh, through the darkness. But suddenly uh, God began to dispel the black clouds and suddenly you could see the red and white of the stripes uh, and suddenly you could begin to see the stars. Uh, and God is allowing a time for revival. And as Sister Carneal said, we need to think it, speak it, declare it, live it. Uh, we've got to let revival become the passion of our life. Uh, hallelujah, that everything is ordered uh, toward revival. <clears throat> That you arrange your schedule for revival. You arrange your life for revival. Hallelujah. Don't get too busy. <coughs> 
Don't plan too much. All the invitations you've been waiting to have, they'll all come your way suddenly. <clears throat> you know, have you ever fasted <clears throat> and discovered that you get more invitations out for dinner while you're fasting than you get the rest of the year? <clears throat> Oh, yes. <laughs> you start to make yourself available for revival. Or every invitation will not necessarily be the one that God wants you to walk through, even though they look good. Because God is going to have a people that are available for the revival. And sometimes being available is emptying your schedule rather than filling it up so you can stand in his presence and look on his face and stand and intercede and believe God for these glorious things that he's doing in this day and hour. Well, I feel the revival glory. How many feel it? Oh, yes, revival glory. Hallelujah. I encourage you to make yourself available to be with us as much as you can in the next three weeks. Brother Rennie McLean will be with us from London week at the week following. I think he's coming in this Wednesday. The week after that, Brother um, Dwight Jones will be with us. I don't know of anyone that's had more angelic visitations than Brother Dwight Jones, and he'll share some of his experiences with you and cause you to reach out into new realms of the Spirit. I'm reading tonight several portions of Scripture Reading from Psalm, <coughs> Psalm 17. <coughs> Psalm <coughs> 17, verse 15. As for me, <coughs> I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. As for me, <laughs> say it, as for me, <laughs> as for me, <clears throat> I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Reading also from Song of Songs. Song of Songs, chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 2, which is really the opening verse of this, <laughs> of this song. Verse 2, that's the opening verse of the Song of Songs. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord there's an intimacy that god wants to bring forth in this day and hour that the church has missed out on all of these years we've known miracles we've known healings uh, we've heard the voice of god we've had prophecies uh, but somehow uh, we have avoided <coughs> intimacy with God we've been very delighted to know him as king seated upon the throne happy to know him as the good shepherd of our soul delighted to know him as the great healer of body and soul but somehow we have been too busy to be intimate with the Lord and to allow him to be intimate with us <clears throat> Solomon in writing this he said he gave him permission you know there comes a time that we have to give the Lord permission and we have to say let him Lord we are going to allow you 
to kiss us with the kisses of your mouth. We're going to allow you to be intimate with us, with our souls. We're not putting up the barriers anymore. Amen. Of thus far and no farther, we are <clears throat> going to be a people that allow you to come into our lives, into every area of our being, that there's not going to be any any chamber within that is not open to you, any secret place, any hidden place, any place that you are not allowed, that you are not wanted, that you are not desired. But somehow God is creating in this day a hunger to know him intimately one of the brothers came down from New York said he had read my book first thing he said I want to see the Lord that's why he came all the way from New York I'm glad that my book created within him a hunger to see the Lord not only in hunger but it gave him a consciousness that there is the possibility of seeing the Lord. Oh no. Oh yes, we were taught uh, through the years that we could all hear the voice of God and we've all heard uh, countless number of sermons concerning my sheep. Uh, know my voice uh, and how blessed we have been to hear the voice of God. Somehow no one ever preached. I can't remember hearing sermons where we were ever told uh, that everyone could see the Lord and that it was the privilege of every child of God to see his face just as we hear his voice. I never heard it preached, but I'm so glad, hallelujah, that the Lord gave us an understanding that just as we can hear his voice, we have the privilege of seeing his face. And if you don't hear his voice the first time you stop to listen, don't be impatient and don't be frustrated. Continue to listen because the day will come that it'll ring so clear that you'll have it as a gift to you from then on. You'll know his voice in such a way that you'll hear it, whether it's in the midnight hour or whether it's in the daytime, whether you're in the midst of the crowd or whether you're alone, you'll hear his voice and you'll know it. <laughs> Praise the Lord in like manner. Don't be frustrated if when you begin to look to see his face, you don't see it the first time or maybe the second or the third. I remember when we were having the meeting in the Philippines years ago, different times I would, Sister Irene was just saved and filled with the Spirit there. Uh, she's uh, in Tiberias heading up the ministry in Tiberias today. But <clears throat> she was just saved and filled with the Spirit uh, a few uh, weeks, and uh, oftentimes I'd go looking for her, and I'd find her in the shower sitting on a red bucket turned upside down, <clears throat> crying. I'd try, I'd try to find out why she was crying. She was crying because other people were seeing uh, and other people were hearing uh, and she was not yet seeing or hearing and it was frustrating to her. Uh, but she, could, she followed on. The scripture says, Then shall they know if they follow on to know the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes that's, there's that following on to know him. And I don't know of anybody through the years that's had any more beautiful visions and revelations and hearings than she has had. But she persevered beyond those moments that she hid in the shower and cried so that nobody would could see her. I can recall as a girl driving my mother to Calio. Mother didn't drive in those days, and I got my driving permit when I was 15. And I would drive her down to preach uh, in Calio, about 80, 80 miles away from here. 
I'd drive her down and drive her back. She would preach. And, uh, and uh, I can remember so many times uh, we would talk about the things of God. Uh, and there were those that, uh, you know, that would come in a church and in one service they were saved and filled with the Spirit of God. They instantly heard His voice and instantly saw His face and instantly had glorious experiences. And so many times I would be crying driving on the way home because I had not yet seen. But I'm glad that the day came. <laughs> Hallelujah, that my eyes were open to behold, to behold the Lord in his glory, to behold the Lord in his beauty, to behold the Lord. Hallelujah. And folks, let me say that it's worth pursuing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says in Psalm 24 that this shall be the generation that seeks the face of the Lord. Oh, yes, this is the generation. I believe that you and I are the generation that are seeking the very face of God. We are not only content to see the hand of God being made manifest in miracles and signs and wonders. I want that, but I want to be one that beholds him and beholds him face to face. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God we don't have to wait till we die for it to happen. <laughs> so many of the great songs have been written for after, after death. But all oh, the... <laughs> We can do it while we're alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God's just, <laughs> he's lifting the curtain so that you and I can behold. He's causing us to see him through the lattice work as the gazelle that was there behind the lattice work as he was, uh, the, the deer was going back and forth, showing himself through the lattice uh, and some of you men uh, you're willing to put more time into hunting for animals uh, and to look uh, uh, in intensity searching after them uh, than perhaps in waiting in the presence of God to see his face uh, it takes the same type of patience uh, if you're able to fish for a fish, <laughs> oh, yes, you can also uh, desire to see his face uh, and see it. Hallelujah. As for me, you've got to make the decision. Oh, yes. Uh, as for me, I shall behold thy face in righteousness hallelujah when you make the decision it's your decision you make the determination it's your determination when you get the focus and begin to focus upon the Lord that you are going to see him face to face you will you will <laughs> some seem more easily than others but you know, one of the ladies came to me down at Pensacola in Brownsville a couple of weeks ago, and she said, Sister Ruth, I've read your book several times, and I was blessed by it, but she said, it's been wonderful being in the meetings with you, because she said, I suddenly realized I've been missing it because I've been trying too hard. It's so easy. <laughs> She said, just being in these meetings and getting lost uh, in these little songs, oh yes, uh, when you get lost in these little phrases in which your mind is not actively working, uh, but your soul is ascending, uh, being touched by the very presence of God, hallelujah, one glimpse of him, <laughs> Oh, that's 
it's life's great reward, but you will not only glimpse him once, but you'll glimpse him again and again and again, and you'll see him standing in the midst of the congregation and see him in his ministry to the people. You yourself have to purpose as for me. <laughs> as for me, I shall behold thy face in righteousness. And I tell you, the more you behold his face, it's the most life-changing experience that you can have. Oh, yes, one glimpse of the Lord. You suddenly understand the very character of the Lord. You understand things about God that many hours of Bible teaching haven't been able to impart unto you. You have seen him for yourself you have looked into his eyes <laughs> and seen his smile oh praise the lord hallelujah praise god the lord looking at you suddenly you begin to be transformed even into his image, into his likeness. Hallelujah. Seeing the Lord changes me. Amen. Seeing the Lord changes you in the seeing. We become like unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seeing the Lord brings the changes. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. <laughs> oh, yes, he's changing us, causing us to look like him, act like him, be like him. And the more that we look upon his face, the more we are going to look like him and bring forth his likeness. <clears throat> Little sister Miriam Rappaport, she came to our ministry in 72 in Jerusalem. She was one of the very early Jewish believers in Jesus in the city of Jerusalem. <clears throat> Unusually short. Full of life. Very generous in every way. And I remember... This one day she came sort of bouncing into the service. Some people don't walk, they bounce. She just came bouncing into the service, uh, came up to me, and she said, Sister Ruth, uh, I looked into the mirror today, and guess what I saw? <coughs> I said, what did you see, Sister Miriam? I looked into the mirror today, and I saw Jesus. I haven't been able to come to that point, but I tell you, I'm moving in that direction. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, I looked into the mirror, Sister Miriam said, and I saw Jesus. The psalmist said, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness oh yes I want to be so near to you that I can look upon you and see your countenance and see your face I'll tell you one thing I I know he doesn't have one worry wrinkle oh no he doesn't not one worry wrinkle he is <laughs> Not one anxiety or anxious line upon his face. He's got everything under his control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you look upon his face, those wrinkles, those anxiety wrinkles will leave you too. Yes, they will. Oh, yes, not a, weir, a wearied look in any way because when you see him and know that everything is in his hand, you'll have perfect confidence and peace. Praise the Lord. Solomon said, let him kiss me. 
with the kisses of his mouth. There is an intimate Lord that you and I are only beginning to know. Oh, yes, we have known the great love that comes forth in salvation. We've known his love manifested in healing. We have known his love in the manifestation of provision. But he wants to satisfy the deepest longings in our soul. <laughs> I love that story Sister Jane told this morning about the desire to dance in a ballroom and how Jesus became the Prince Charming <laughs> that danced with her in the ballroom. Oh, yes, though that which he wants to satisfy. Hallelujah. He wants to come to you in more intimate ways. And we say, not so, Lord, not me. But he wants to come to us uh, and he wants to drop uh, sweet things into our lives, into our spirits. Uh, he wants to speak to us in tender words of love. Uh, he wants to sing over us uh, in songs of rejoicing. Uh, he wants, uh, we think we're the ones that want to praise and worship and adore. Uh, but you know, we're, we're only beginning to be worshipers. God's going to teach us how to really worship. And he's going to cause us not only to worship him as king, but to love him and adore him as coming bridegroom. We are so close to the coming of the Lord that he's going to have a people that say, Lord, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Oh, you say, oh, it's so intimate. It's so personal how could I say that the beginning verse of the book of the song of songs let him kiss me oh I want to kiss the Lord yes I saw today a vision of the woman who came rushing in and began to weep at his feet and those tears of love began to flow from her eyes. They were not tears of repentance. No, they were tears of love. They were not tears of sadness. Oh, no, they were tears of love. Isn't it wonderful when the glory comes? How many feel those tears of love? Oh, yes, suddenly, tears that fill your eyes. You're not sad. You're not repentant. None of those things, but suddenly, your love for Jesus suddenly overwhelms you and fills your heart in such a way that tears come to your eyes. His love is so real. It's so tender. He is so precious. You feel the outpouring pouring of his love upon you in every area of your life he touches you we want to touch him but he wants to touch you and he doesn't want to touch the facade that people know that's you he wants to touch you the innermost part of your life that desire as sister jane said to the lord <coughs> Lord, I can't think of any desire that I've ever had that hasn't been fulfilled. Instantly, the Lord gave her the vision <clears throat> of, <clears throat> of being a child that had asked to have the privilege to go to a ballroom dance. God knew the desire. The unfulfilled part within every one of you. You know, so many times we, we are hesitant to say those deep desires within us. We are even a little embarrassed to let people know things that we want to do for God, things that we want to do in ministry, things that we would like, uh, how we would like to excel even in the kingdom of God. Remember one time in Jerusalem, <clears throat> Sister Susan asked the people in the class to bring for homework the next day every unfulfilled word that had been given over their life. 
whether it had been in prophecy or vision or God had spoken to him personally or it had been through the word. The thing that was outstanding to me, when everybody came with their paper, they all quickly, because they were sitting next to people, they all quickly got another paper and they covered over their paper. They didn't want anybody to know. When she began to draw them out, <clears throat> what is it that God's spoken to you that is yet unfulfilled that you want God to do? They were very shy to say, God has shown me that I'll preach to multitudes. Or God has spoken to me that I'm going to minister to the Amish. Amen. Whatever it is, they were sort of hiding because somehow it was so personal. It was so intimate. Even those desires of what they wanted to do for God were seemingly so intimate. They didn't want anyone to know. Certainly not the one sitting next to them, the one on the either side. They all covered their paper, and she had to go around the room one by one and ask. And each one, she said, "Oh, I can see that that's going to be too difficult. You're already seeing miracles. You're all." already seeing God work. Uh, oh, yes, God can increase the numbers. Yes, God can increase uh, the miracles. Oh, yes, God can increase the open doors. Oh, yes, God can. <laughs> God can increase the radio. Oh, yes, God can do it. But you and I have got to let him uh, if we are hesitant with one another, uh, you say, well, I'm not so hesitant with God. Oh, yes, we are. We only speak to God in general on the surface things. Uh, but God's reaching in into the depth of our being in these days. Uh, Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> That's one of the things that the laughter is doing. It's touching the innermost part of our being. Yes, the Lord kissing us with a kiss of his mouth. People say, well, why do folks fall down under the power? Well, we really don't know. It might be a kiss from God. We don't know. Amen. We don't begin to perceive what God is doing. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. We give our explanations for this, that, and the other. But have you really considered what it's like to have the kisses of his mouth? Oh, I don't think we begin to perceive him kissing us with the kisses of his mouth. Such love, such tenderness poured out into our spirit I don't know about you but what I don't know I'm willing to learn amen what I'm not sure about I'm willing to experience I believe this is the day that we're going to see him face to face hallelujah and in seeing him face to face we're going to behold his face in righteousness we're going to know the touch of his lips upon our own well, these lips are going to be changed and transformed hallelujah because of him kissing us with the kisses of his mouth our speech is going to be different our lives changed from glory to glory to glory in ways that we've never considered before it's important for us when we fall out under the power not to always be too hasty to get up now I know we don't have enough room here I would have prayed for everybody here last night uh, if we had more room for everybody to fall out I I think we're gonna have to start doing like they do up at uh, Monsignor Walsh's in Wynwood uh, he has somebody that just goes down the line praying for people right in their seats uh, all doing the service so that everybody not one person leaves without having hands laid on them uh, Hallelujah, we may have to do that, but 
we're working at the moment. We're going to have a large building over in there where the little tabernacle is, right over in front of us. And uh, it'll be for winter, but we're going to have it to seat a large number of people, but mainly that we'll have dancing room and falling out room. <laughs> oh, yes, we want... <coughs> We want lots of room for dancing and lots of room for falling out. Uh, and we want, uh, we don't want only the altar to be here, but we want the whole place to become the altar of God uh, so that people can lie before the Lord uh, in those glories and let God minister into their souls uh, life changing experiences. Uh, him kissing us with the uh, kisses of his mouth hallelujah let's let the song of songs become a a very personal book for you begin to read it let those words come into your soul let them be the beauty that touches and caresses your heart and touches every part of your every fiber of your being that there shall not be any area of your spirit uh, that is untouched by the warmth of his love, uh, that there'll be no area in your life that's cold uh, and indifferent, but that every area of your life uh, and your spirit shall be alive uh, with the fire of God, the passion for the Lord. And if you have that passion for the Lord, you'll have a passion for souls and a passion for revival, glory to be manifested across this country. Hallelujah. God's already given us a promise. I see it done. How oh, he's already said there would not be a village nor a hamlet nor a town nor a city in this nation that would be untouched by the revival glory. I believe it. Hallelujah. I see it is already done. And you and I are going to be those that are part of this greater thing. If you want revival, talk it. If you want revival, uh, believe for it. Uh, live in it. Amen. When you meet the scoffers, uh, don't enter into their negativity. Just continue to pour it out uh, in that positive stream. This is God's day. This is God's hour. This is God's time for revival. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Israel's Jubilee started a day or two before Christmas, or just around that time, and it goes through this year. And don't think God's not going to celebrate Israel's Jubilee. He is. <laughs> oh, yes, God, we, saw, we, we are becoming more and more a celebrating people because we're becoming, getting to know that he's a celebrating God. Oh, yes, he's a celebrating God, and he knows every great occasion, and he always pulls out the fireworks, uh, and he does something glorious. I was in uh, at the presidential prayer breakfast two mornings ago, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> We had gotten there. Sister Debbie and I had had tea with the Israeli ambassador's wife in the afternoon, and we had stayed several hours. So by the time we got to the hotel, it was a little late. And we got up to our room on the ninth floor, and one of those little magnetic keys wasn't magnetic. And, of course, you know, you have to walk these great distances in these hotels, and so... I just let Sister Debbie do the walking, <clears throat> and I stood there. I guess it was 45 minutes later. She told me later she got there, and the computers were down because of the storm, and, and everybody was having the same problem. And about 45 minutes to an hour later, the security man came, and he said, we can't get this key fixed, but we'll give you the next room. So we got the next room. But this meant we were late for dinner. When we got down for dinner, down in the ballroom, 
I knew everybody would have already eaten, but we were all hungry. And uh, I said to Sister Debbie, I said, let's look for a table where there's some forks and knives that haven't been used. <laughs> And we walked past all of, everybody had finished eating. We only saw four people that were finishing their dessert over, over here. And, and there were three or four sets of forks and knives there. So we sat down and she went to, to say something to the maitre d' about uh, could we be served, explaining the situation, why we were so late. But just at that moment, they announced the speaker and two of the men that we had just sat beside were the ones that got up <laughs> and went to the podium. Congressman John Christensen from Nebraska and another congressman from Tennessee. Do you remember his name? From Hendersonville, Tennessee. But they began talking about revival. They'd be, oh, yes, John Christensen had been down to Pensacola, <laughs> touched by revival. <laughs> I mean, here with all of these strong evangelicals from all over the world, he begins talking about revival. Suddenly we looked at each other. The 45-minute hour wait that we had didn't seem quite so bad as it had been. We knew we were at the appointed time and at the appointed place. We don't like these occasions, but I tell you, when you begin to see God in them, you begin to see he's directing your life, and it was wonderful because by the time they came off of the podium and their other two friends, other two congressmen joined them, Sister Debbie ran after them. She had three copies of my book, Glory. She said to, to John Christensen, you were sitting at the table with Sister Ruth. She's just come from Pensacola, from Brownsville, speaking at the women's convention, and you'll be blessed by her book. Oh, what God is doing. What a day that we're living in. There's a revival glory. I've been to a number of those prayer breakfasts, and I would say this was the least formal and the most spiritual of any that we've been to all of these years because the God is changing the climate. He's changing the climate in our country. And he's causing people to want an intimacy with God. And you and I, who already know the Lord in one measure and perhaps in another, God's saying, I want to do more. And you and I have got to respond and say, Lord, yes, we've been kissed by you, but we want to know the kisses. We don't want to be kissed only once. We want to know the intimacy of daily fellowship, daily communion we want that daily relationship we want to look upon your face and know you as well as we know our earthly father our earthly brother our earthly husband our earthly friend we want to be able to recognize you describe you amen because of those experiences we have you say sister Ruth is it possible it's more than possible it's going to be a reality, <laughs> a reality for you as you lay aside the natural, those the things that take your time, take your attention, and begin to move into revival glory. Oh, you'll know the realms of glory that you've never known before. You'll be lifted up, lifted out of yourself and into, into eternal realms. Yeah, you'll be lifted up where you'll see the Lord face to face. You'll feel his touch. You'll hear his voice. You'll know his mind. You'll feel his heart beat. Oh, greater days, more glorious days. Greater ways, more glorious ways. Greater understandings than you've ever had before. 
and you'll find greater manifestations of his presence, greater manifestations of his power, greater revelations of his glory flowing into your soul. Your soul will be quickened, 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 quickened with new understandings. You'll be amazed at what he says to you, how he flows through you. Amazed, amazed, amazed. So greatly amazed you will be as he flows in and out into you and out of you. Oh, amazed you shall be. His kisses are sweeter than wine, much, much, much more sweet than wine. And you'll know that flow of the Spirit that you've never known before. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. There are those of you here <clears throat> that need to give your emotions to God. You have prided yourself on being filled with the Spirit, but conservative and sedate. But throw it away. <laughs> oh, throw it away. <laughs> Let the Lord awaken every one of your emotions. Let him awaken every one of your emotions and let them come alive in the presence of the Lord. Oh, that you'll be more joyful. That you'll be, oh, more full of the Spirit. That whether he wants you to weep in his presence or rejoice in his presence, that you are giving him every one of your emotions. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that we'll be able to love and that he'll love through us. <laughs> oh, love through me, Holy Spirit. Love through me, Holy Spirit. Love through me. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voices. One of the easiest ways to come into the glory is singing, singing, singing in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's gather in up at the front as many as we will as will. Hallelujah. Your love is greater than wine. Your love is sweeter than wine. Your love is sweeter than wine. Move in a little closer so others can come. Your love is sweeter than wine. 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 Love is sweet than wine. Your love is sweet. 
and white Your love is sweeter than white Your love is sweeter than white Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth Your love is sweeter than wine Oh, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Your love is sweeter than wine. I love you, my Lord. I Yeah, 
showed me that there's somebody here tonight that when you were first saved and filled with the Spirit, you had so many wonderful visions of the face of the Lord, and you even used to draw them, sketch them, because it was so 
It was so wonderful. And those experiences were so life-changing. But that's been a long time ago. And God wants to restore it. He wants to restore that easy ability to see the face of the Lord. There are others here tonight that you took it so for granted. You were able to see the Lord easily, but you took the experience for granted in more recent years. You're not seeing the Lord, but the Lord wants to restore that ability that every time you pray, every time you worship, you'll be able to see the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some of you that have been robbed of your visionary realm because others have criticized you and uh, you had no one to share it with and so you just let it dry up. But God wants to bring a restoration to that revelatory realm of the Spirit, your ability to see in God as we're worshiping with such ease. Just let Him anoint your eyes afresh to see. He's put... <laughs> I tell you, he's got hearts that are full of eyes. That's right. He wants your heart to be full of eyes round about. Uh, just like the living creatures are full of eyes round about, he wants your heart. That out of that pulsating heart for God, out of that pulsating heart for God, that there will be that visionary realm of seeing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm yours, I'm yours, oh Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours, oh Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours, oh Lord, your love. Close 
I wonder how many of you saw a vision or had a revelation while we were worshiping tonight. Let me just see your hand, Jess. Yes, yes, all over I see those. I wonder if there are several that would like to share your vision. If you had a vision tonight and you'd like to share it, I want you just to step up. We'll have several share a vision. Everyone doesn't need to, but if there are several that would like to quickly We'll just have you come and share it. The Lord showed me that many, many... 
many here had been stopped up that your well had been dammed. And it just shot up, and the, it was just like a volcano with the rocks that were holding you back. The flow was just breaking and breaking. And it was like a geyser come up. And others were like artesian wells that had been hidden deep, and all of a sudden the covering has broke forth, and that pure water is flowing out. And there are many here that will be used in a dynamic way because you have been saved and hid for a time such as this. And the Lord saith unto you that I have called thee and chosen thee, and yea, even hid thee for this time, saith the Lord. For yea, as thou begin to move into the flow of my spirit, yea, there will no, be no stoppage, there will be no denam to keep thee back, saith the Lord. For I am taking thee into the places where others will not go. For yea, thou shalt flow freely into cracks and crevices, yea, into nooks and crannies where people are hidden, Yea, even those who are afraid to come forth, saith the Lord. For there are many, many who have been hurt by the church and are hid, saith the Lord. And I would have you to go, yea, as the living water, and pull them out of the cracks and crevices. Yea, bring them up to the forefront. For I, the Lord God, have a mighty work of my spirit to be done. And yea, it will be done as you leave this place. For many will be used greatly, saith the Lord. And yea, do not say that you have little, for yea, I am much, for I am in thee. And I am the overflow, saith the Lord. And I am the overflow that will take thee to many nations, saith the Lord. And yea, thou will go to many, many places, many nations, saith the Lord. Yea, even to tribes that have not heard the gospel, saith the Lord. And it will be into hidden places, saith the Lord, that I will take my people. Yea, there will those that will be on the platform, Yea, to be with kings and priests, saith the Lord. But yea, many will go to the ones and the twos and the hidden ones. And yea, to bring the hidden word out, saith the Lord. For my body that has been hid is now moving, saith the Lord. As we were singing, singing kiss me with the kisses of your mouth I as I was singing it I was almost seeing the Lord in front of me singing it to me too and he was just so full of joy he was just dancing and he just wanted me to dance with him and he he just it just it was such a joyful time of him he's just so he is so full of joy that we are willing to sing to him, and it was like he was singing it back. We want to be kissed by him, but um, he he wants us to kiss him too. It's a, It was almost like he was just standing in front of me, and, and like we were face to face um, singing this song, and it was just such a, I don't know, just a joyful fun is the word. I've, I just felt like he was just having fun, and he wants us to have fun in him, and I was like, Lord, this should be kind of a serious time we're worshiping here. <laughs> but he was having fun. I just saw this vision of him just frolicking with us and dancing and having fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, if, it, if it's better than wine, wine makes you have frolic and have fun. Huh? Hallelujah. Someone else. I saw a vision of the Lord, and he was in this this white garment, and it was beautiful, and he just danced all, all around over every one of us. And as he danced around every one of us, he gave a kiss of each of us. He kissed each of us. And there's the glory and the miracles. And the miracles are falling down from heaven. And the Lord just said, take it take it because I want to give you abundantly far beyond your wildest dreams because I love you. As we were all singing in the spirit, I saw the Lord. He had a brilliant, beautiful smile on his face, and he was waving a banner over all of us from this side of the tabernacle over back and forth as we were moving in the realms of glory. 
and his banner was love. And the Lord said, I'm filling all of my people with my love this night, which will never fail. It will bring in the multitudes throughout this land, America, and the world. And he was just filling us with his sweetness and his kindness and his love and just flowing into each and every one of us. This is going to be a revival of love because the love will never fail, saith the Lord. I, I felt as we all prayed that every person in the world that we prayed for, that the power of Christ went and touched all of them. I think we were like more than an atomic explosion just going out with God's glory and power to everyone that we prayed for. Majestic, majestic. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I saw flashes of lightning proceed from the throne. And the Lord just stood up, and as he stood, the fire came out of his mouth. And as the fire shot from his mouth, this huge wall began to just melt. And as the wall melted, it began to enter into us and break down our walls. But then the fire, I saw it shooting out of my mouth and out of others' mouths. And as it did, it broke down, dividing walls. And the Lord was showing me as we're one here from all different places, in all different places, that that power of his love and his fire was going to break the walls. Hallelujah. Well, I saw the Lord in um Praise the Lord. And he sat down. It was like we were sitting beside each other. And it was very casual. It was like he was just talking with me. Uh, and then a little while later, it, it, then I saw another vision. And it makes sense based on what some of the other people have said. But I saw a ball of fire. And, I, and it was traveling in the air. And I was, I was like watching this ball of fire. And I was saying, Lord, what is this ball of fire? And I didn't get a response, and it kept traveling and traveling and traveling, and I just, I just sat, you know, I was just watching this thing, and all of a sudden, it, it was like it shot down, and it just, I mean, I think it went into the pit of hell, and I saw, I just saw, you know, people, like down there, and I mean, I don't understand the full meaning of it, but I think it has something to do with the the fire shooting out of his mouth or the volcano, but I, I just believe that what. Our praise and worship has gone, you know, into far-reaching places. <laughs> Amen. I yeah. Hallelujah. Are there one or two others that want to share? Sister Ruth. I saw his eyes, and his eyes were traveling over our shoulders, <laughs> and he was looked at the frailties of our lives, and then he began to strengthen our shoulders. His eyes moved with such uh, piercing looks, but yet there was pearls and uh, uh, the iridescent uh, heavenly look about him. Then around his eyes was gold, but then it was fire, and it moved in waves along every part of our body that was awakened to his love. And I, I saw it especially right here. Our love began to awaken to him, uh, and it came up. And suddenly his eyes looked upon our faces, and he began to kiss us with such love. And he said, my darlings, my darlings, how I love you. And then his eyes began to move over our heads moved down our arms and he was awakening every part of our body 
that we were loving him with more emotion and we were not going through the motions. He said, some are going through the motions. You know, we can, I can get an anointing and just move with it because I'm familiar with it, but my heart may not be in it. And then his eyes begin to look into our hearts. I've never seen such eyes in my life. Never have I seen such a look as he looked into us that we were going to become more familiar with him and his love toward us. You're awakening our hearts. You're awakening us, O oh Lord. You're awakening every area of our being. All of our emotions are coming alive unto you. The Lord took me into an armory. And in that room, there were many, many helmets. And there were many, many breastplates. But he took me to a set of armor that had my name on it. And it was fitted exactly for my specifications. And he, he placed on me a helmet of salvation. And he placed on me a breastplate of righteousness that fit exactly me. He shod my feet with shoes of the gospel of peace. Around my waist he placed a belt of truth. And then he showed me a shield of faith. And I had to reach out and pick up the shield of faith. He showed me the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and I had to reach out and pick that up. And as I handed him the sword of the Spirit, and I kneeled before him, he gave me my commission. And my commission, and he handed me back the sword. And he said, as you come into my realm of praise and worship, and enter into the glory, this is not just for you. It is for you to go out into battle. And I will gird you up, and great things will be done as you go into battle for my name. And I beheld my beloved standing at the gate, beckoning me. Come hither. Come hither unto me. It is a secret place. It is a secret place. A very secret place. Yet it's not hidden. Yet it's not hidden. Yet it's not hidden from any one of thee. But few there be that find it, few there be that find it, for it is a secret place, the secret place of intimacy. Come closer, come closer, come closer, oh, come closer, come closer unto me. Draw nigh, draw nigh, draw nigh, my love, and let my kiss. Oh, let my kiss penetrate thee. A consummation, a consummation for the price I paid for thee. A consummation of the covenant I have. I'd like to share a couple of 
images that God used with me in reconstructing my personality. The first one is as a little child, gleefully, gleefully running to daddy and jumping up in his lap and giving him a kiss and he kissing me. The second image is running gleefully to Jesus, jumping in his lap and giving him a kiss and he kissing me. The third image, running to Jesus to have him hold and cradle me in his arms, smothering me with his love. I taking Jesus and holding him the same way, kissing him, caressing him, running my fingers through his hair, taking the Holy Spirit the same way, to love and adore him, to kiss him, to caress him. The Holy Spirit taking me and doing the same thing. And for the men that stand here in God's presence, to kiss Jesus, to kiss the Father, is not to make you a homosexual. It does not compromise. It enhances your manhood. You know, often we hear men speak up concerning the problem that they have being the bride of Christ. But you never hear us ladies speak up about having problem being sons of God. It's in the spirit, it's not in the natural. Oh, yes, it's in the spirit, not in the natural. Hallelujah. revelation of the spirit come let the revelation the revelation the revelation of the spirit I love you Lord from heaven and his foot is just about to touch earth just about to touch earth and he says get ready it's going to be so soon get ready cleanse yourself purify yourself humble yourself that's the thing humble yourself he says he says it doesn't matter what gifts you have you humble yourself and you have love in your hearts he's about to come very soon He's already in the atmosphere. I saw his foot just about to touch earth. It was a huge foot. It's so huge. And he loves us. Amen, amen, amen. Those that want to linger, feel free to linger. 
I believe tonight they're going to have the refreshments over in the snack bar. Is that right? They're having, instead of having it over here like we usually do, if you want to have fellowship and little refreshments, they're going to have it in the building right across from us. Those that want to linger in the presence of the Lord, feel free to. Since tomorrow is Sunday and we're going to have a full day, we're going to let you folks just be dispersed if you would like to, but just let that go to bed in the glory. You know, there's nothing wonderful. <laughs> nothing more wonderful than going to bed in the glory and having visions on your bed and dreams in the night. Uh, hallelujah. For there's a further lifting up. There's a further lifting up. There's a further lifting up. And to realms of glory. I will be lifted up. I will greatly be lifted up. I will be greatly lifted up. Into realms of glory. I will be greatly lifted up. I will be greatly lifted up. I will be greatly lifted up. Into realms of glory will be greatly lifted up. I will be greatly lifted up. I will be greatly lifted up. Into realms of glory. Hallelujah. 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 Rejoice a little bit before you go. Hallelujah, 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 I will be great. Lifted up, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will be greatly lifted up, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will. several people.
gate are open heaven's gates are open.